Hey guys, it's Parker Doman, the Longhorn Engineer, and today my TI uh, experimenter board came in. It's not the launch pad, but it's kind of like the launch pad. It's, it utilizes their new FRAM memory, which is Ferroelectric Random Access Memory, and it's the MSP EXP 430FR5739, mouthful, uh, experimenter's board. And right now, of this video, TI is having this 50% off if uh, you go online and order it through their sh online shop at ti.com. Let's just go ahead and open this guy up. And it looks like we've got a little user manual here. And what's this say? Experimental product disclaimer. Hmm. It says I have to sign this and return it within three working days. It's kind of interesting. So here's I guess this is the board. It looks a little bit bigger than the launch pad. Open that up in a bit. Wow. Oh. Goodies. So we got some female headers. It's always useful. A little crystal, same kind that came with the launch pad, probably. It looks like a little 90 degree header for some reason. And oh, another USB mini cable. Probably got thousands of those now. Well, it looks like that's everything in the box. Let's take a look at the board. So here's the board. It looks close to the launch pad. It doesn't have a socketed uh, MSP430. And the headers are pre-soldered on with male headers. Uh, it's got these boards down here. From I understand you, uh, TI has other modules that you can plug into here. And I think they're wireless modules. But yeah. Um, USB, normal stuff. The cool thing about this board though it comes with an accelerometer. Let's see what that says. Oh, it's an AXL335. You all don't know what that is. That's a uh, fairly standard three axis accelerometer. It's not a bad little piece of a uh, chip to be on this board for, 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 uh, for $15, I think is what it is right now. It's $30 without the coupon. Um, that that uh, accelerometer usually goes for about six to nine dollars, so it being included on this board is a pretty good deal. So apparently, if you connect this up to your laptop, there's a GUI that pops up with like some apps and stuff that are preloaded onto this MSP430. So let's go ahead and just do that right now. Let's see here. Sorry about the shadow, guys. Plug it. Ooh, it's got a nice bank of LEDs too. So we're gonna come up to here, and I already downloaded this packet. You can find it on the TI Fram website. It's ti.com/fram, if I recall. And I extracted it and it has, uh, let's see if I can go back. So it has the drivers you need, uh, source code for the GUI, then it has the experience, which is the code, and it has a lot of, dem uh, a lot of uh, comments and stuff, so it's actually re I've actually already taken a look at it, and it's fairly easy to understand. So, I'm going to go in here and go ahead and run the Fram GUI EXE. That's going to pop up with this. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. So, I guess how this works is I hit reset. And then one of these buttons switches the modes. There's four modes. And the other one turns that mode on. So, the first mode is supposed to be... Uh, how fast it can write to its 
RAM memory. Second mode is how fast regular flash memory writes. Number three is the accelerometer mode and number four is there's actually a thermoresistor on this board right here up here. So let's go ahead and try this out. That's first mode selected I guess. Oh it's doing something. So clearly uh, they had it so it maxes out their gauge. <laughs> And so I guess that bar means, uh, I guess how fast it's uh, going. And then apparently FRAM memory is supposed to be very, you can write a lot to it. Like, uh, like an EEPROM, you might be able to write 100,000 times to a certain block before it, uh, I guess, breaks. It's not the good word for it, but that's basically what it does. And this is apparently you have one trillion, is it one trillion? I think it's about one trillion writes to a uh, to the frame memory, which is a lot. That's basically, this thing would never die in terms of usability. Okay, so that's enough of that. So you can see this percentage going down slowly. That would take a while to go all the way down. So we're going to switch modes, I think this button, oh, it turned on the flash writing. And it's going at 11 kilobytes per second, which TI clearly shows that it doesn't even register on the, on the speedometer. I bet you they designed it that way. <laughs> So you have 2,000 kilobytes per second, or 10 kilobytes per second. It's clearly, frames a lot faster if we're going to go by this user demo. Let's go to the next mode, which is supposed to be a accelerometer, and it's supposed to act like a bubble level. So, if you, if you watch the LEDs, they get brighter. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. So as it tilts, the LEDs light up. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to guess this only uses one of the axes. And I have taken a look at the schematic, and all the axes are hooked up to the uh, Fram, uh, the MSP430 Fram chip through the uh, Part 3. I think it's 3.0, 3.1, and 3.2 all use uh, are hooked up to the accelerometer analog outputs. Okay, so let's try the fourth mode, which is thermoresistor. Yeah, it's writing temp data at 44 kilobytes per second. It's a lot slower than 200, uh, not 200, uh, 2,000 kilobytes per second. Hmm. So I guess if I put my finger on this, will it heat up? I think this is where it's at. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that's where it's at. Maybe it's so hot out here in the garage that my finger's not even doing anything to it. It's about 95 degrees in the shed. <laughs> this is the, uh, 16 by 96 LDMD or LED dot matrix display, which is light emitting diode dot matrix display. That's kind of a long name, but we'll roll with it. And uh, 16 by 96 uses 8 by 8 LED uh, modules, kind of like the test one. And uh, the FPGA board plugs in like right here with these sockets. And then the propeller communicates. Uh, uh, yeah, the propeller communicates through this port. And then these chips down here are uh, ULN 2803s, which allow the uh, basically the transistor arrays, so that you can sync more current into it. Because if you light up one entire row, that's 96 LEDs. 
times about 20 milliamps and so you're getting really close to 1.5 amps which is quite a lot uh, for an FPGA to sync and so each one of these pins on the transistor arrays can sync 500 milliamps or 0.5 amps so uh, there's uh, three pins connected for each one and so you can sync 1.5 amps per line so if you lit up the entire display nothing should explode okay now later guys